UTPA men's basketball and baseball start full team practices. We take you to all the action. Can you imagine being on Survivor at the age of 12? One women's soccer player had a similar experience. And with the new UTPA soccer and track and field complex set to open this week, we take a look at the future of UTPA athletics facilities. This is Bronc Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Broad Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. Well the countdown has finally begun, the UTPA men's basketball team in the midst of 42 days until the first game. During that span, the Bronx will have 30 full team practices. We have full coverage beginning with Tyler Zimmerman. The road to a possible NCAA invitation began for the basketball Bronx of Texas Pan American. The roster has changed, but the goal remains the same. The Bronx were eager to get back in the court in their second year competing in the WAC. Guard Shaquille Boga and forward Shaquille Hines are back with the squad and eager to build upon last season. Boga will give the Bronx some stability in the backcourt and is looking to tighten up defensively. I was exciting, the new faces coming together, so it's going to be a process, but it was fun today. We were trying to get better and uh, play team defense and stop teams from scoring and, and, and score to win the game. Hines averaged 12 points per game while grabbing six boards last year and plans to just get better. Defense, that's what I, was, that's what I wanted to get done the most in defense. Last year, we kind of got beat a lot on defense, so I want to make sure this year our defense is on point. I think practice went really well. You know, we still got a lot of learning to do, but I think we learned it quick. For head coach Dan Hipshire, their practice was all about getting back to the basics. You know, a lot of drill work now, so there's a lot of repetition going on, a lot of teaching going on, so it's a little slower than you might like it. I look for good things from this team. We've got good size. We've got some skill. It's just how it all meshes together and comes together. But uh, we're a little bit young, and uh, but hopefully by conference season, I think we can be a pretty good team. The Bronx will open up the season November 14th, home against Wayland Baptist. For Bronx Country, I am Tyler Zimmerman. The Bronx practicing with a new assistant coach as Jay Stedman was recently hired to round out the staff. Romeo Villarreal has more. On September 24th, it was announced that former assistant coach of the Rio Grande Valley Vipers, Jay Stedman, would be taking an assistant coaching position with the men's basketball team. A coach called me, um, said that there was an opening here at UTPA, and... Uh, Really excited, really wanted to return to the Valley and um, gladly offered the position. Having spent an extended amount of time in the Valley once before, Coach Stedman was excited about how much the men's basketball program has developed since he was last in the Valley. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, when I was here previously, um, you know, I, I thought they were a little undersized and uh, very well coached, but. They look like a Division One basketball team. They look like a Division One team that can compete in the WAC conference and, you know, hopefully compete for an NCAA title. So, uh, I told the team this morning after workouts, I was very, very impressed. Uh, we look like a team. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but I'm very impressed with what Dan and his son and staff has put together in a short amount of time. Coach Stedman believes his ability to engage the community and his time spent on a championship D-League team will help push the men's basketball program forward. I think it's very important that we get out. I think the vast majority of four-year college graduates are from UTPA. So I think that's going to be very important for us to get out again and shake hands and invite people back to the UTPA games like we did for the Vipers. Um, Fan-friendly environment. We won. We also won, too, and that's a big thing, too. Um, we won with the Vipers, and we will win at UTPA. So I think the combination of reaching out to the Valley, getting the people of the Valley interested back in UTPA basketball winning, I think will be success both on and off the court. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. How about UTPA women's basketball? They start full team practices on Friday. That story next week on Bronx Country. The basketball team's not the only one starting full team practices at UTPA, as the baseball team is already back on the diamond for two months of full team practices. Romeo Villarreal is on the baseball beat. 
Men's baseball kicked off the start of their fall practice schedule, and even though their first game isn't for some time, that hasn't stopped them from putting in hard work. We've been getting after it, working hard. Everybody's been working hard. Coach Mantrana uses these fall practices to get new players up to speed about how the UTPA baseball system works. We've uh, slowly uh, implemented a portion of our practice schedule. Uh, we did that on Monday, another uh, portion on Tuesday. Uh, yesterday we did the same. Today we implemented our BP portion. So tomorrow we'll finish up and we'll be ready to go uh, full practice on Monday. One of the lessons Coach Mantrana hopes to implement in his players is always giving 100% in any endeavor they take. Going good. Uh, I, from California, I got to get used to the weather and uh, it being humid out here, but I really like the program. I like we're heading in the right direction. You know, the first week of practice is always good. Uh, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of effort. But uh, what we asked them to do is, whether it's the first week or the last week of the season, we expect uh, consistent and productive efforts from all of them once they step on the field. So that's what... Uh, we're instilling in them, uh, making sure that you, they come to the field with a mindset of getting better uh, today, over the previous day, and making sure that their efforts are productive and consistent. Reporting from the Edinburgh Baseball Stadium for Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiao. Have you ever wondered what it was like to be on a reality show? One Bronx has already had that experience. Next on Bronx Country, we tell you about one women's soccer player's time on the hit Swedish TV reality show, Wild Kids. Ball on the right wing, goes for the tie, and he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop, ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Fogel from half court! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The UTPA women's soccer team has been having a historic season, and it translated into a win immediately as the Bronx beat New Mexico State last week in their WAC opener. This past weekend saw the Bronx embark on their first WAC road trip, and it started out with their fourth tie of the season, a 1-1 double overtime draw at Chicago State. The lone goal courtesy of Amy Intulai, her fifth of the year, just a minute and a half into the second half, off a feed from Sheridan Buchanan. The Bronx thoroughly dominated the match, outshooting the Cougars 32 to 5, including 14 to 4 on goal. The Bronx outshot the Cougars 15 nothing in the first half and 3 to nothing in the second overtime. It was a uh, typical game between two first-year teams. Um, for us, we start off uh, very tentative. I think uh, there's a, there a lot of excitement about going on our first road trip and and. Uh, you know, and uh, trying to adjust to that. Um, we didn't play particularly well, but in the end, you know, it's two first-year teams trying to eke out a point in the league, and uh, that's what everybody got. But you know, we're always happy with a point on the road. 47 hours later, Bronx facing their toughest challenge yet, taking on Kansas City. 19 minutes in, Bronx down 1-0 when Aubrey Coley comes up with the save. Move ahead to the second half. Bronx down 5-0, and Erica Gonzalez is on in relief, getting her first whack action and playing well. Makes the save on this Nikki Lynch shot. And then, after allowing a goal, Gonzalez bounces back to make two more stops in the final six minutes. For the Rogs pick up their first whack loss, just their second of the season, 6-0. Very difficult game. Um, that top three in the conference is, um, you know, is extremely good, extremely talented. Uh, it's going to take a, a few more recruiting classes to be able to catch up with them. Uh, but I know that the players we have now have set a good base, a good standard, and they'll have a very good response when we play them again on Sunday. Here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx return home this weekend for the start of a four-match homestand starting Friday at 4 p.m. at Chicago State in what will be the first ever match 
at the brand new UTPA Soccer and Track and Field Complex. The Bronx also hosts Kansas City on Sunday at 1. We're very excited. Uh, it's a big game for us against uh, Chicago State first year program. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to gain some confidence from their 1-1 uh, their tie with us, which of course, like I said before, we're, we're happy with the tie on the road, but I think we'll, we'll, we'll play very well and then uh, hopefully get the result. The way the Bronx are playing this year really has been remarkable. It shows a kind of toughness. Frida Farstad Eriksson learned to be tough at a young age as she was on the Swedish reality TV version of Survivor, Wild Kids, at the age of 12. Lydia Alvarez has the story. Not too many people know UTPA has an international reality star out on the pitch. When, when the show aired in Sweden, um, a lot of people recognized me and they did that for a couple of years. They still recognize me and that's, I don't understand how they can do that, but they still do. Frida had a bigger dream. I actually had a dream since I was 11, since I was on that show. So it's, it's a really big step to coming here and, you know, fulfilling my dream. She has been playing soccer since she was six and is now a defender for the UTPA Bronx. Yeah, my family, they are really proud of me being here and playing soccer and following my dream. They, they are so proud. But I guess, I mean, in a soccer team, you're, you're in a team and you have to, you know, be friends with people and you have to find a bond. And in Wild Kids, we were a team too and we got really close. So I guess it help, has helped me in that way that I'm good at, you know, the team chemistry or whatever. Women's soccer is really taking off and is doing great at UTPA, and Frida is one piece to the puzzle. I mean, the, the people in the show, and especially the one in my team, they became my family. Like, UTPA is my family now. Frida began as a wild kid in Sweden and has since transitioned into the Bronx family. Today, she is fulfilling her dream of playing college soccer. Reporting for Bronx Country, I am Lidia Alvarez. On to volleyball, Bronx embarking on a four-match road trip, starting with a date at Seattle. Pretty competitive match. Opening set, Bronx within 17-19 on this Haley Durham kill before falling 25-19. The second set was epic, featuring 13 ties and seven lead changes. Here's one of those lead changes on a kill by Alicia Watson to put the Bronx up 24-23. And then, after the Red Hawks tie it, Watson gives the Bronx the lead again before the Bronx fall, 25-27. The third set was tight late as well, with the Bronx as close as 20-21 on this Deara Reynolds kill. But the Red Hawks take the set 25-22 to complete the sweep. Watson continues her torrid play, 10 kills on 471 hitting to go with three aces. Durham finished with eight kills and a pair of blocks. Reynolds had six kills and three blocks. Offensively did a, a decent number of things. Um, our, our passing kind of held us back a little bit. Uh, weren't in system as much as we, we should have been. Um, you know, and we were right there. We had our chances, you know, even being down 15 to six in that third set, you know, I really called out a couple people, got on the girls a little bit uh, and they responded. And that's, you know, that was the positive that I, you know, that we were able to take from that match. You know, we, we made it a match, we made it a set, um, but uh, you know, we, too many errors, uh, you know, and, the, and Seattle's a great team. You know, they, they proved it again on, you know, on Saturday beat, beating New Mexico State. But, uh, you know, they're one of the bigger teams we see, you know, a huge 6-3 block on the right side, 6-5 block in the middle. Uh, we just made some poor choices challenging the, the wrong people at the, at the wrong time. Two days later, the Bronx visited longtime rival Utah Valley, and it was another strong match for Alicia Watson. First set, Watson brings the Bronx within 6-10, and then 7-10. Watson kept up the pressure later in the set with a pair of kills, but the Bronx falls 17-25. Move ahead to the third set. Bronx down 16-23, but Watson comes up big not once, but twice. And then facing match point, Watson keeps the Bronx alive, but the Wolverines ultimately complete the sweep. Watson another 10-kill match for the Bronx. Haley Durham with seven kills and four blocks. Kira Hill at a nice match with three kills on 429 hitting. We get into that gym and, you know, maybe we create our own issues, I think. Uh, they came out and, and got a big head start and, uh, you know, we didn't respond very well to that. Uh, we've got to get our outside hitters going. You know, that's kind of been a weakness for us the last couple of matches, you know, just some inconsistency there. Um, you know, and I can see it from Thursday night with a, a huge block against them, you know, some things that they were struggling with. You know, we finally figured it out too late. but. Uh, 
you know, it was a different size block on Saturday. Uh, so the fact that we couldn't get going again was, was concerning. Here's what the wax standings look like. The Bronx currently sitting in seventh, ahead of Chicago State and right behind Grand Canyon and Bakersfield. The Bronx are back in action on Thursday against defending WAC champion, New Mexico State. You know, New Mexico State, uh, a team that's kind of a, a mix of the two that we saw last week. Um, you know, a decent sized block, some big hitters, things like that. But, uh, you know, some team, you know, a team that we, you know, I, th I feel like we can be successful at, you know, at some of our strengths. So, um, you know, we're going to have to go and compete. They're coming off a loss. So, you know, they're going to be fired up for that, I'm sure, and on their home court. But, uh, you know, I really feel like the, the top five or six teams in this conference uh, are, you know, night in and night out. It, you know, it's, it can go any way. And I, I believe, truly believe we're one of those teams. So we've got to have that confidence. The girls have to know that. And if we'll do that, then, uh, you know, we'll be in a battle with New Mexico State. Big weekend for men's tennis at Lamar's Ron Westbrook's Invitational. Freshman Kobe Jansen already making his mark by winning the championship of the singles flight. Jansen won all four of his matches in straight sets, including one against a player from Texas A&M and two against players from host Lamar. Sophomore Juan Cruz Soria also had a big tournament, going 3-1 to finish runner-up in his flight. The Bronx are back in action starting October 18th at the ITA Regionals at Texas A&M. Men's cross country traveled to Arkansas for the 26th annual Chili Pepper Festival and performed pretty well in their first 8K of the season. There were 430 runners at this event and junior Jose Juan Wells paced the Bronx by finishing ahead of nearly 300 competitors. Leo Dominguez not far behind. The Bronx are back on the course on Saturday at Incarnate Word. It, it didn't go exactly as we liked. Um, you know, our front runner Luis Serrano was having some Achilles issues. You know, didn't complete the race, so we had to complete. The, you know, with our number two as our number one runner, and that, that shifts the scales a little bit. But the guys went down. They competed hard. You know, we had some some great competition within our region and some just from all over the nation. So they got to test themselves on the Arkansas course, and they'll be ready when we come back for regionals. Last week we took a look at the last five years with Chris King. This week we take a look forward. Coming up on Bronx Country, the future of UTPA Athletics facilities. This Friday, UTPA Athletics will open its brand new on-campus soccer and track and field complex when the women's soccer team plays Chicago State at 4 p.m. Opening a new facility is always a big accomplishment for a university. But for UTPA Athletics, it's only the beginning. Vince Erickson has the story. Jonah, thank you. UTPA's athletic facilities, much like facilities all around campus, continue to just get bigger and better. And that includes renovations to the indoor facilities and outdoor facilities as well, like the brand new soccer and track complex here. And folks, the new facilities boon is not going to end anytime soon. Most people, um, a lot of times, they look at two things when they're looking at um, athletic programs. One is competitive results, and then two is the facilities, whether it's fans, whether it's supporters of the program, whether it's potential recruits, whether it's your current student athletes. And so facilities are a key part uh, in everything we do. When I arrived here, um, the field house, although it had a ton of tradition, uh, it really looked like um, the, 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 the bleachers, as an example, looked like... Um, they were a part of the set of the Hoosiers movie, as an example. And, and there were some safety and liability issues, um, both with the bleachers and with the court. And so I think with us and, and Dr. Nelson supporting um, the, the rehab of that facility and tearing out those uh, bleachers and tearing out the floor and putting a new NBA floating floor and brand new bleachers, I think it totally changed the, giant, the dynamics of uh, the actual game day experience for the fans. I think it's really cool to kind of run out for the athletes to see it for the first time in that Northwestern game as an example back you know, four mm -hmm. years ago. I think a lot of the other things that we've done, we've uh, rehabbed the uh, tennis facility, put a uh, $255,000 Band-Aid uh, on it as far as research to the courts, putting up new fencing, sandblasting, painting. Mm -hmm. We've done it with all the facilities. We put graphics up. We've renovated all the offices. Everybody has their own office space. Everybody has all new furniture. And it takes a, a, it takes a lot of uh, uh, money from both the institution as well as our donor base to be able to do that. But I think we have a much cleaner look now with our facilities. Uh, I think everybody's very prideful of our facilities. Uh, and then you, know, you get a chance to do a new build, uh, like the brand new soccer track and field complex. 
uh, I think what it does is it elevates the need for what we need to do with the rest of the facilities. Namely, the Edinburgh Baseball Stadium, which will require renovations from the facade, to the dugouts, to the fences, the video board. All a part of King's ambitious strategic plan of the three F's, finances, facilities, and funding. I think uh, we have um, an untapped market to really be able to do some significant growth in our fundraising, but also our corporate support and potential naming rights for the facilities. Uh, I think without a shadow of a doubt, I think that you're gonna see um, some major donors step up uh, in the next couple of years for namings of the soccer track and field complex, to do a naming of the baseball stadium, to potentially do a naming of the field house. Uh, you know, we, we envision potentially uh, building a brand new tennis complex south of um, the, the uh, soccer track and field complex off of 107. We envision uh, coming up with a brand new hitting bay out at Los Lagos for our golf program. So um, when we unveil the strategic plan, uh, it will be audacious. And some people will say, well, there's, how are they ever going to uh, uh, fulfill their dreams or their vision? And they said the same thing five years ago when we unveiled the last strategic plan. Uh, and so we've been right on uh, with every step we've made, and hopefully we, we continue to down that path. A path that looks stronger every day. I'm Vince Erickson reporting for Bronc Country. Just three weeks left in the Bronc Athletic Fund donor drive. Don't wait, act now. Donate to the Bronc Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit broncathleticfund.com today see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. Ball on the right wing goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop. Yeah. Ties the game! Oh, with yeah. three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from half court! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Women's soccer plays the first match ever at the new UTPA Soccer and Track and Field Complex on Friday at 4 p.m. against Chicago State. There will be a grand opening with a ribbon cutting at three. The Bronx then hosts Kansas City on Sunday at one. Volleyball is still on the road with a date against New Mexico State on Thursday. Cross country heads to Incarnate Word on Saturday. And then on Monday and Tuesday, women's golf is off to Arkansas State for the Red Wolves Classic. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Go Bronx! <laughs>
We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The ball on the right wing goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop. Yeah. Ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from half court! Brunson! Brunson! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics.